So I've been a bit of a negative Nancy about the Switch recently. Two of my more recent videos involved me complaining about lackluster features of the console. Let's get into more of a positive mood and talk about why this thing is one of my favorite consoles of all time. The main reason why I love the Switch so much is because it has the games, man. In year one of the Switch's life, we were given the next 3D Mario, as well as Breath of the Wild, of course, which was the big launch game for it. Throw in some solid Wii U ports, such as Pokémon Tournament and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, as well as some surprisingly solid third-party games like Skyrim and Mario and Rabbids, it could be argued that the Switch had the best first year on the market of any game console ever. I personally don't care for it too much, but Splatoon 2 coming out that year also really helped drive sales. The momentum definitely slowed down a bit in year two, but we still got some great games in there. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is amazing, of course. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee were pretty interesting titles, and Super Mario Party just kind of happened. All three of these were sales juggernauts. Ports of older games were still plentiful and were a great addition to the Switch's library. Such games are Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, Minecraft, Civ 6, Hollow Knight, Celeste. In future years, other Nintendo franchises got games released on the Switch, such as Animal Crossing, Metroid, Pikmin, WarioWare, Top Down Zelda, Luigi's Mansion, Super Super Mario Maker, Advance Wars, and I assure you, there are still several that I forgot to mention here. Meanwhile, it is true that a lot of these are ports. Does that matter too much? To the general public, absolutely not. Games like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, Pikmin 3 Deluxe, Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, these strengthen the Switch's library considerably in my opinion. In the specific case of the Wii U, plenty of people never got to play these games because that thing sold like ass. The pricing mythology of making them all full price though, I will, yeah, that's annoying, but just don't buy it then. Though I would argue that great games are worth double dipping on. I happily paid $60 for Pikmin 3 Deluxe because now a mainline entry Pikmin game can be played portably. And playing the story mode in co-op, that's also incredible. I paid $60 for Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze because I personally believe that it's one of the greatest 2D platformers of all time, and being able to play it in handheld form, that is just amazing. I bought Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at full price too because the enhanced battle mode, oh, it just made it feel like a complete game. I did not buy Tokyo Mirage Sessions at Fiancore because I have to have some sort of standards. Don't get me wrong, I wish all these games were new entries in their specific franchises, sure, it would have been neat to get Pikmin 4 or Mario Kart 9, but creating a game from the ground up? That takes way longer than porting an older one. It could take significant work, mind you, but this was a quick and dirty way of releasing a game at a decent rate. In 2017, Nintendo published a major game for the Switch every single month. The Switch's library could definitely seem port-heavy at times, but this is great for people who want to play games portably, or they are new to gaming, or even people who are used to play games but have been out of the loop for a while. I think the discovery a huge game like Skyrim or The Witcher 3 on the Switch would have been absolutely mind-blowing. It must also be said, even though I'm not paying for it at the moment, Nintendo's at least putting some effort into putting their legacy content on the Switch. If one wants to pay up for their online services, they get to play specific NES and SNES games on there. If they pay an additional fee, they can play very specific Nintendo 64 games on here as well. Not my favorite method of playing games either, but certain games like Kingdom Hearts 3, Control, and Hitman 3 can be played via cloud versions. I get that downsizing games can be an expensive task, but, eh, I'd rather just play them elsewhere at that point. Just the pure amount of games that can be played on an unmodded Switch is fascinating. According to various sources, the number is around 4,000 games. Yes, there is absolutely a good helping of complete shovelware in that number, but there are plenty of good games too. The library for the Switch is just so diverse. The fact that we could jump from Super Mario Odyssey, the latest 3D Mario game, then hop into Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth, a JRPG, to Monster Rancher 1 and 2 Deluxe, a compilation of PS1 monster racing games, to Pikmin 3, my favorite Wii U game, to Mario Party Superstars, to Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2, to Banjo Kazooie, to Metroid Dread, to Hollow Knight, to Hitman 3. It's just so neat to see a library this large and diverse. Yes, some of these games have their catches, like they are cloud versions or a part of the online service, but this has filled the closest to a complete library on a Nintendo console in a long time, probably since the SNES. Sure, it may not get the latest big Call of Duty every year, but I don't really care about those anyway. A lot of the bigger and more intensive games that I actually care about, like Doom Eternal, find their way over here anyways. The second big thing that I love about the Switch is, well, the idea. 3D Mario games? Those aren't for a handheld unless they are shrunken down like Super Mario 3D Land. The next 3D Zelda? Unless they are experimental spin-offs or something? Those are exclusive to consoles, not handhelds, man. A full-fledged Pikmin game on a handheld? That can't happen. The screen is too small, the hardware isn't strong enough to have all those cute critters moving around, it's just impossible. A full-fledged Metroid Prime game on a handheld? Don't make me laugh, I can't even pretend that can happen. Skyrim on what's essentially a tablet? Okay then, like that will ever happen. It's just so neat watching all these games reach a broader audience to be playable on a Nintendo handheld. I remember seeing a few comments of people who exclusively own Nintendo hardware getting really hyped for Skyrim, all the way back in 2017 when the Switch was announced. 
Another thing that I really like about the Switch is how Nintendo is becoming more, what's the word, universal, less stubborn, they're just getting with the times. I'm a huge fan of the fact that Nintendo Switch uses a USB-C charger. None of this exclusive charger horseshit like all their other handhelds. I can leave the one that came with the console in the dock and charge the Switch really anywhere in my house or at my friend's house. USB-C is becoming so common now with all the Android phones that support it. It may have come super late, but Nintendo recently enabled the users to use their Bluetooth headsets with the Switch. Remember that stupid Game Boy controller adapter that only worked with Super Smash Bros. 4 Wii U on the Wii U? Well, my brother and I were playing Mario Party Superstars with Game Boy controllers to take us back to the GameCube era. Remember how Nintendo used their dumbass blocks system to determine how much space a game takes up? For the first time a Nintendo handheld, they can finally use gigabytes. I just find it to be so much more natural and helpful to use something that is, you know, universally used to determine storage. For the most part, I would argue that those are the huge pluses of the Nintendo Switch. I already went over why I don't like their online service, or the Joy-Cons, but I wanted to keep this video positive. At the end of the day, Nintendo has the games, including a lot of exclusives. They are pricey games, and in some cases, pricey and old. Sure, but Nintendo sells them like that because they know they can get away with it. The games are just so solid and they stand the test of time, that I will throw down $60 for Mario Kart 8 Dogs, even though I played the original on Wii U seven years ago. So despite its shortcomings and annoyances, the Nintendo Switch will stand as one of my favorite consoles of all time, honestly. I mean, in just in October alone, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, Metroid Dread, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania, and Mario Party Superstars all came out, which are four games that I'm very interested in, with Pokemon, Monster Rancher, and Shin Megami Tensei 5 releasing around the corner, there's just too much to play on this thing. That is the drum that everyone has been kind of beaten to death, right? Nintendo has the games and, well, not much else. The Switch has that in strides. I really like how they are giving smaller franchises, or franchises that have been on hiatus, shots again. When was the last time an original 2D Metroid game came up before Dread again? All the way back in 2002. That is a 19 year gap. The last Advance Wars released in 2008, and now a remake of the first two Advance Wars games is coming out in spring of 2022. I hope that Nintendo can keep building the software lineup with other older franchises that have been dead recently. Getting a new F-Zero game, Star Fox, Mario Strikers, or Chibi Robo? That would be very neat. The lineup of games is the biggest thing that the Switch has going for it in my opinion. Let's hope that they can keep that momentum going in the years forward.